April 24 The Lord's Covenant Promise to David When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all the surrounding enemies, the king summoned Nathan the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of God is out there in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Go ahead and do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the Lord said to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord has declared. Are you the one to build a house for me to live in? I have never lived in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until this very day. I have always moved from one place to another with a tent, and a tabernacle is my dwelling. Yet no matter where I have gone with the Israelites, I have never once complained to Israel's tribal leaders, the shepherds of my people Israel. I have never asked them, Why haven't you built me a beautiful cedar house? Now go and say to my servant David, This is what the Lord of heaven's armies has declared. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on the earth, and I will provide a homeland for my people Israel, planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Evil nations won't oppress them as they have done in the past, starting from the time I appointed judges to rule my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Furthermore, the Lord declares that he will make a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, your own offspring, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for my name and I will secure his royal throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. If he sins, I will correct and discipline him with the rod, like any father would do. But my favor will not be taken from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from your sight. Your house and your kingdom will continue before me for all time, and your throne will be secure forever." So Nathan went back to David and told him everything the Lord had said in this vision. From First Chronicles When David was settled in his palace, he summoned Nathan the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of the Lord's covenant is out there under a tent. Nathan replied to David, Do whatever you have in mind, for God is with you. But that same night God said to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord has declared. You are not the one to build a house for me to live in. I have never lived in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until this very day. My home has always been a tent, moving from one place to another in a tabernacle. Yet no matter where I have gone with the Israelites, I have never once complained to Israel's leaders, the shepherds of my people. I have never asked them, Why haven't you built me a beautiful cedar house? Now go and say to my servant David, This is what the Lord of heaven's armies has declared. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on the earth, and I will provide a homeland for my people Israel, planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Evil nations won't oppress them as they have done in the past, starting from the time I appointed judges to rule my people Israel, and I will defeat all your enemies. Furthermore, I declare that the Lord will build a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and join your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, one of your sons, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for me, and I will secure his throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will never take my favor from him as I took it from the one who ruled before you. I will confirm him as king over my house and my kingdom for all time, and his throne will be secure forever. So Nathan went back to David and told him everything the Lord had said in this vision. From Second Samuel David's Prayer of Thanks Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed. 
Who am I, O Sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? And now, Sovereign Lord, in addition to everything else you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty, do you deal with everyone this way, O Sovereign Lord? What more can I say to you? You know what your servant is really like, Sovereign Lord, because of your promise and according to your will, you have done all these great things and have made them known to your servant. How great you are, O Sovereign Lord! There is no one like you. We have never even heard of another God like you. What other nation on earth is like your people Israel? What other nation, O God, have you redeemed from slavery to be your own people? You made a great name for yourself when you redeemed your people from Egypt. You performed awesome miracles and drove out the nations and gods that stood in their way. You made Israel your very own people forever, and you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord God, I am your servant. Do as you have promised concerning me and my family. Confirm it as a promise that will last forever. And may your name be honored forever, so that everyone will say, The Lord of heaven's armies is God over Israel. And may the house of your servant David continue before you forever. O Lord of heaven's armies, God of Israel, I have been bold enough to pray this prayer to you because you have revealed all this to your servant, saying, I will build a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For you are God, O sovereign Lord. Your words are truth, and you have promised these good things to your servant. And now may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you have spoken. And when you grant a blessing to your servant, O Sovereign Lord, it is an eternal blessing. From First Chronicles Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? And now, O God, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty? You speak as though I were someone very great, O Lord God. What more can I say to you about the way you have honored me? You know what your servant is really like. For the sake of your servant, O Lord, and according to your will, you have done all these great things and have made them known. O Lord, there is no one like you. We have never even heard of another God like you. What other nation on earth is like your people Israel? What other nation, O God, have you redeemed from slavery to be your own people? You made a great name for yourself when you redeemed your people from Egypt. You performed awesome miracles and drove out the nations that stood in their way. You chose Israel to be your very own people forever, and you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord, I am your servant. Do as you have promised concerning me and my family. May it be a promise that will last forever, and may your name be established and honored forever, so that everyone will say, The Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, is Israel's God. And may the house of your servant David continue before you forever. O my God, I have been bold enough to pray to you because you have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him, a dynasty of kings. For you are God, O Lord, and you have promised these good things to your servant. And now it has pleased you to bless the house of your servant so that it will continue forever before you. For when you grant a blessing, O Lord, it is an eternal blessing. From Second Samuel David's Military Victories After this, David defeated and subdued the Philistines by conquering Gath, their largest town. David also conquered the land of Moab. He made the people lie down on the ground in a row, and he measured them off in groups with a length of rope. He measured off two groups to be executed for every one group to be spared. The Moabites who were spared became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. David also destroyed the forces of Hadadezer, son of Rehob, king of Zobah, when Hadadezer marched out to strengthen his control along the Euphrates River. David captured 1,700 charioteers and 20,000 foot soldiers. He crippled all the chariot horses except enough for 100 chariots. When Arameans from Damascus arrived to help King Hadadezer, David killed 22,000 of them. Then he placed several army garrisons in Damascus, the Aramean capital, and the Arameans became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. So the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. David brought the gold shields of Hadadezer's officers to Jerusalem, along with a large amount of bronze from Hadadezer's towns of Teba and Berothai. 
When King Toy of Hamath heard that David had destroyed the entire army of Hadadezer, he sent his son Joram to congratulate King David for his successful campaign. Hadadezer and Toy had been enemies and were often at war. Joram presented David with many gifts of silver, gold, and bronze. King David dedicated all these gifts to the Lord, as he did with the silver and gold from the other nations he had defeated, from Edom, Moab, Ammon, Philistia, and Amalek, and from Hadadezer, son of Rehob, king of Zobah. So David became very famous. After his return, he destroyed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He placed army garrisons throughout Edom, and all the Edomites became David's subjects. In fact, the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. From First Chronicles After this, David defeated and subdued the Philistines by conquering Gath and its surrounding towns. David also conquered the land of Moab, and the Moabites who were spared became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. David also destroyed the forces of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, as far as Hamath, when Hadadezer marched out to strengthen his control along the Euphrates River. David captured 1,000 chariots, 7,000 charioteers, and 20,000 foot soldiers. He crippled all the chariot horses except enough for 100 chariots. When Arameans from Damascus arrived to help King Hadadezer, David killed 22,000 of them. Then he placed several army garrisons in Damascus, the Aramean capital, and the Arameans became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. So the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. David brought the gold shields of Hadadezer's officers to Jerusalem, along with a large amount of bronze from Hadadezer's towns of Teba and Kun. Later, Solomon melted the bronze and molded it into the great bronze basin called the sea, the pillars, and the various bronze articles used at the temple. When King Toy of Hamath heard that David had destroyed the entire army of King Hadadezer of Zobah, he sent his son Joram to congratulate King David for his successful campaign. Hadadezer and Toy had been enemies and were often at war. Joram presented David with many gifts of gold, silver, and bronze. King David dedicated all these gifts to the Lord, along with the silver and gold he had taken from the other nations, from Edom, Moab, Ammon, Philistia, and Amalek. Abishai, son of Zuriah, destroyed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He placed army garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's subjects. In fact, the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. Psalm 60. You have rejected us, O God, and broken our defenses. You have been angry with us. Now restore us to your favor. You have shaken our land and split it open. Seal the cracks, for the land trembles. You have been very hard on us, making us drink wine that sent us reeling. But you have raised a banner for those who fear you, a rallying point in the face of attack. Now rescue your beloved people, answer and save us by your power. God has promised this by his holiness. I will divide up Shechem with joy. I will measure out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh too. Ephraim, my helmet, will produce my warriors, and Judah, my scepter, will produce my kings. But Moab, my wash basin, will become my servant, and I will wipe my feet on Edom and shout in triumph over Philistia. Who will bring me into the fortified city? Who will bring me victory over Edom? Have you rejected us, O God? Will you no longer march with our armies? Oh, please help us against our enemies, for all human help is useless. With God's help, we will do mighty things, for he will trample down our foes.